Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar for this evening. I hope you've all had a fabulous week. I've had a great week, very busy like everyone else, um, but it's been beautiful weather so I can't complain at all. So I'm really excited to present this webinar for you this evening. Uh, this is our last of the series um, of the seven part series on a social cell that. And today's webinar is social prospecting and engaging. So learning how to prospect and engage with existing and new customers might be the hardest part for you on social and I know it's a lot of information and I get a lot of questions about this as well. So you can create content, you can find communities, explain and showcase, you know, how much you love your products, but how do you actually get someone to listen? and engage with you. So let's find out how to effectively prospect and engage as well as do it with the rules and standards. But before we get started, let's talk about how we're going to communicate today. So I've asked um, a few of you beforehand if you could see my voice, oh, sorry, see the screen and hear my voice and you could so we know that you can actually hear me and see the screen. Now if I ask for uh, any feedback or if you'd like to put any comments in, please pop that in the chat box and then at the end of the webinar we'll have some Q&A time. So put any of your questions that you have in the Q&A box. So let's go through our agenda and what we're going to be uh, covering today. So today's webinar will be fairly short um, because we're finishing off the modules that make up the social um, selling that course. Okay, so this is the last little snippet. So today what we're going to be covering is how to get started with prospecting and engaging how and why you should share social content, and how to reach out with the best practices for direct messaging. And we've got some great little video content in there for you as well to engage with and have a look at. So what's in it for you? Engaging with new prospects might be the hardest part of the job. However, this video is going to make it so much easier for you to understand how to connect with new prospects. Let's have a little look at this video. Now that you've identified your target prospects and the social media conversations you should be paying attention to, it's time to begin engaging with them. It's important to have reasonable expectations for what social selling can deliver. You can spot a potential opportunity and then slowly build a relationship that could eventually lead to a deal. The goal of social selling is to warm up cold calls and set the stage for more effective outreach through traditional sales channels. When you interact on social networks, do your best to not be too salesy. Steer clear of pitching and direct sales type language. Your job as a social seller is to build relationships by offering advice and expertise, not necessarily information about your company's solutions and services. Taking the time to build relationships and trust pays off by increasing the likelihood of a positive response when you connect with a prospect via email or phone call. So what does engaging on social media look like? You might interact with your prospect's content by commenting on their blog or social media posts which could generate a conversation that showcases your expertise. On Twitter, you could retweet a relevant tweet from a prospect or send a thoughtful reply. If you've come across a piece of content that connects with one of your prospect's pain points, tweet it at them directly with a brief note about why they might find it interesting. Keep in mind, the goal of all these engagement activities is to establish yourself as a trusted advisor, create awareness, and remain top of mind for your clients and prospects. Sellers who follow you may be able to gain competitive insights about your pipeline based on the content and people you're engaging with. If you're listening to other sellers, chances are they're listening to you. For this reason, you may want to limit your engagement with important leads to private messaging. Conferences and other events also offer opportunities for engagement. 
They provide a venue for jumping into real-time, lively discussions relevant to your business. For example, if you're attending an industry conference, you can monitor the event hashtag and look for conversations you can jump into or questions you can answer. Keep in mind that everything you post on Twitter ends up in your tweets and replies list. As such, strive for a blend of thought leadership, customized reach outs, and personal engagements in your online efforts. It's important to stay connected to customers and prospects throughout the sales cycle. By continuously having back and forth conversations and keeping in touch, you will increase the likelihood that you'll be the first person they come to for solutions. And finally, don't be afraid to use humor when appropriate. Even business-related conversations can be fun, light, and casual. So let's just recap on that video. Focus on creating relationships and being an influencer or leader in the space that you're representing or you're interested in. Now, if you give too much of a sales pitch, you'll lose your authentic self. And this is, the, this is why people choose to follow you in the first place. So remember that you can't contact people who you don't have a pre-existing relationship with. Remember that we covered this in our previous webinar, week two, social strategy and rules, part one. And this was spam communication. So why should you share social content? Well, if you don't, none of your followers will know what you're up to. So it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So it's really important to consistently post content that you think your audience would like. So let's look at what content you should post and how often you should post it. And we'll watch a little video to explain all this. When it comes to sharing content across your social properties, there's a general set of best practices you should exercise wherever you post. A strong headline or caption is key to grabbing a reader's attention. Write copy that strikes a balance between being clear and emotionally evocative. Take the time to brainstorm a few variations of the copy that will accompany your infographic, image, or blog post. When sharing the same piece of content across multiple networks, optimize how you will present it on each platform. Visual content provides a great boost to engagement. Use a mixture of photos images with text overlay, and videos to enhance the value and visual appeal of your posts. You don't need to add a visual element to every single update, but do keep an eye on how visuals impact your engagement and adjust your course accordingly. To keep your audience interested, vary your content regularly. A mix of questions, polls, and calls for user-generated content are all great ways to facilitate a conversation. Aim to end your posts with a clear call to action. Optimal posting times differ for every network. As a guideline, don't release too many messages to the same network at once. Instead, focus on testing both your headlines and your posting times to see what gets you the highest levels of engagement. Keep self-promotional content at around one-third of all content you publish. While your audience likely follows you because they're interested in your products and services, Focusing on building rapport and consistently sharing valuable information will build brand loyalty over the long haul.
Okay, so now let's have an activity to mix things up. Okay, you weren't expecting that one, were you? So I'm sure you've had a really long day, so I need to wake you up. Okay, so what I'd like you to think about is that video that we just played. Yeah, I'm going to play it again. And this time I want you to write down and all make a mental note of all the key takeaways that you remember from the video. Okay, so if you haven't got pen and pencil in front of you, just grab a pen quickly uh, and some paper. And I want you to just concentrate on the video and just make a few notes of some of those key takeaways. When it comes to sharing content across your social properties, there's a general set of best practices you should exercise wherever you post. A strong headline or caption is key to grabbing a reader's attention. Write copy that strikes a balance between being clear and emotionally evocative. Take the time to brainstorm a few variations of the copy that will accompany your infographic, image, or blog post. When sharing the same piece of content across multiple networks, optimize how you will present it on each platform. Visual content provides a great boost to engagement. Use a mixture of photos, images with text overlay, and videos to enhance the value and visual appeal of your posts. You don't need to add a visual element to every single update, but do keep an eye on how visuals impact your engagement and adjust your course accordingly. To keep your audience interested, vary your content regularly. A mix of questions, polls, and calls for user-generated content are all great ways to facilitate a conversation. Aim to end your posts with a clear call to action. Optimal posting times differ for every network. As a guideline, don't release too many messages to the same network at once. Instead, focus on testing both your headlines and your posting times to see what gets you the highest levels of engagement. Keep self-promotional content at around one-third of all content you publish. While your audience likely follows you because they're interested in your products and services, focusing on building rapport and consistently sharing valuable information will build brand loyalty over the long haul. Okay, so did you get any of these key points? <clears throat> Share four times as much, <clears throat> excuse me, as much lifestyle and educational content as you do product information. Identify trusted content sources in your industry. And engage with content from your, uh, engage with content from your followers. Acknowledge people who engage with your content and make sure the content you share is in line with your personal brand. So keep in mind that close to nobody is going to be interested in just products. Remember when we talked about the four C's in module two? The four C's started with developing context. Now the best practice is to first focus on lifestyle and then focus on how the products fit into that lifestyle. And that's going to be your key to content success. Also remember that it's not all about you. Others want to be engaged with as well. So like and comment on their content as well. And chances are a connection will be formed and you'll continue to grow your network. Now, remember what Tony said a couple of weeks ago when we talked about looking the part on social and she showed that lovely website from the Russian IBO, Angelica, and how she mixed up her content 
to make it really interesting. Some was about lifestyles, some was about product, some was about family life, some was about business. And she made it really interesting. So let's now watch a video on best practice for direct messaging. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other networks offer the ability to send private messages so you can connect with people directly for one-on-one -on -one interactions. On Facebook and Twitter, direct messages are best used to take a public interaction private, when the details of the conversation wouldn't be appropriate to discuss in the open or beneficial for others on the platform. For example, sharing phone numbers or going back and forth over the details of a customer's particular experience would best be discussed privately via direct message. To send a direct message to someone on Twitter, you must be following each other, and you may not send a private message from your Facebook page unless an individual has reached out to you first. As your network grows, you may find it helpful to develop templates for the messages you send often. For example, a template for when you're visiting a new location, attending a conference, or asking for an introduction. Regardless of the platform on which you're sending a direct message, always state the purpose of your message early and clearly to respect prospects' time, and make sure your message is relevant and personalized. While it's okay to send a follow-up message, never send the same message to someone over and over again. When someone new follows or connects with you, Make a habit of messaging them to say thanks and to ask what prompted them to connect with you and whether there's anything you can help them with. You never know, it may be a potential customer who's researching new solutions. It's best to think of your social media messages and outreach as a method for opening the door to an eventual phone or face-to-face -face contact with a prospect. Remember, it's a way to get on prospects' radar. So when they're ready to buy, you'll stand out among your competition. So the biggest thing to remember about direct messaging people is to earn the right to message them. Think about how you feel when you get messages from people that you don't know or you aren't interested in what they're saying. It's really annoying, isn't it? Now, this could do more damage than good for your business by creating a social engagement that people just don't want to be part of. So direct messages are useful for exchanging phone numbers or arranging a in-person meeting. To send a private message from your Facebook business page, an individual must reach out to you first because otherwise that will be spam, right? So remember to state the purpose of your message early and clearly and ensure that it's relevant and it's personalised. And if you aren't sure, please review week two and three social strategy rules and uh, um, uh, strategy and rules to review push pull communication and also spam communication. So we've now covered the seven modules for social selling that. So let's review all the modules that we've covered. In week one, we covered why social selling matters. And some of the topics were the value of social media for sales. The social, uh, how social selling can benefit IBOs and your business. Uh, we talked about establish, establishing your personal brand and then covered how to use hashtags. Now, week two, was Social Strategy Rules Part 1. Now, this um, a topic was quite large, so we split it into two, Part 1 and Part 2. So in Part 1, we covered an introduction to the standards, 
how to position product on social with six steps. The difference between a business account and a personal account. And we also talked about the four C's. Can you remember what they were? Context, content, community, and commerce. We also covered spam and the compliance obligations. And the compliance obligations are, you know, what you say should be truthful and not misleading. In week three was part two of the social strategy and rules. And we covered uh, push-pull communication. You know, push meaning sending communication to those you have a relationship with. And poor communication is creating content to allow others to find your content or posts and opt in. We talked about intellectual property and, and that being, you know, trademarks, images you can use, music, etc. Claims about the Amway Corporation, what you can say and what you can't say. And also building a social community. Okay, so on week four and five, we had the fabulous Tony Coles join us. And wasn't that fabulous? You know, she answered a lot of our questions. So week four was looking the part on social. And we discussed getting your social tool book box in order. Looking the part on Instagram and Facebook. And what social platforms do your customers or prospects use the most? You know, out of the demographics that you tend to work with, you know, what are they using, Facebook or Instagram? Now, how many platforms do you want to be part of? Because there's quite a few. And really, in this course, we've only covered um, Instagram and Facebook. And Tony talked about the IBO in uh, Russia that has a really engaging content on her Instagram and Facebook. Her name was Angelica. And we had a look at her content and it gave us a really good idea, didn't it, about the mix of content that she uses. In week five was finding your community. And it was really thought provoking because we, we really pushed the, um, you to really work out what is your community and what do you want to be part of? So we talked about finding your community on social media and also finding your community on Instagram and Facebook. Week six last week, um, uh, Sully went through the best practices for social media and she talked about best practices for sharing social, uh, sorry, sharing content and best practices for sharing content on Instagram and Facebook. And then she went through with you how to shoot a flat lay. That's fabulous, isn't it? I mean, I love flat lay. Um, because you, know, you can get really creative and have great fun with it. And I really would suggest that you have a look at other flat lay content out there and, and get some inspiration because you can have so much fun with it. And today, of course, our last session, social prospecting and engaging, how to get started with prospecting and engaging, how and why you should share social content, so people know what you're up to, right? And reaching out, best practices for direct messaging. So I hope you've had um, a lot of information for Food for Thought to get you going, to get you excited, to you know, answer some of your queries as well. But you know what? If you don't have some of your queries answered, please reach out to us. Sally and I would love to find out the answers for you on aulearning at amway.com and then we can get back to you. So you'll find all of the webinar recordings on the website and it's, it's changed slightly from what we've been talking about. So um, you'll find the My Faves banner. If you click on uh, shop, yeah, go to a product category 
and right on the right hand side you'll see um, my favorites or favorites yeah click on that and that will take you to the my favors banner so when you get to the My Faves banner there, just click on Learn More, scroll down to Grow With Social Selling, click Learn More and it'll come up with all of the, the different weeks and the recordings for each week. So please also visit the e-learning site and view our Social Selling course. Just go to the Education tab on the website and click on e-learning and you'll find the entire sell-through social media course there. Now there's great information and fabulous backups. You know, say you just want to learn and, and review and revise spam, you know, you can go into that course and, um, and find a lot of different information on all the different models, modules. So <clears throat> you can also view, um, some fantastic short video clips. And in this particular section, there's Amway Social Media Education. And when you click on that and open that up, there's some fantastic great tips on how to shoot optimal video using your phone or how to set up a Facebook Live video and so much more. Great little short videos that are really engaging and really teach you the how to's. So this is definite homework for you to complete. And I challenge you to do that because you're going to feel so much more confident. So as I said, for any further questions and queries, please don't hesitate to email aulearning at amway.com and Sally and I, if we can't answer them, we'll pass all your queries on to our social and legal experts and we'll respond to you. So thanks so much for joining us and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye for now.